So we came home today and saw a bunch of smoke. We thought it was a barbecue, but it wasn't. A house across the street was on fire. At least the yard was on fire. So of course I ran inside to grab the drone. Not too often you get a chance to get shots like this. Plus figured, you know, maybe be helpful. When I'm all done, I'm going to send all of this footage to the, um, the three different fire departments who responded so that if they need, um, if it can help them with training or something like that, you know, it might be useful to them. It's scary how fast it spreads. Now, if you look between the house and the shed here, I originally thought that was something hanging over the house that was on fire, but it's not. It's, you're actually looking between the shed and the house, and that's a car on fire. Here's the fire truck coming in. They responded crazy fast, too. It was just excellent because it's scary how fast this spread. It burned like three acres. It seriously makes me want to build a fire break around my house. Because, <laughs> man, this, this would come in fast. Um, I originally got worried because I saw the fire um, pushing in on this u-haul truck there i thought it was a structure from the tiny screen while i was flying but later i saw that it was a u-haul truck i thought it was a shed or something i wonder did the, if you look in the middle here that line is not burnt did the fire jump that gap or did it go down and around and come back i'm not sure I didn't notice the people stamping out the edges of the fire, too. That's good. You see the police truck pull up and right there, and there's somebody there stamping out the edge of that fire. That's good. That probably helped. And now they got the water going. So they're going to put out the car first, since that threatens the structure. Uh, apparently, I learned from later that... Um, it would seem that it was um, fireworks that started this. This was July 4th, 2020. So he's putting out the car that's on fire. You might be wondering, why doesn't he put out the fire that's next to him? Well, because it's not a huge threat. You know, the threat is the house burning. You know, that's someone's home. Someone lives there. So it kind of makes sense to put out the, the most threatening flames first. And then let the other guys coming in with extra hoses take care of the rest. Right, now the cop's actually making good use of the fire extinguisher. I didn't think that would be very effective, but if he's just using it to stop the spread, well, he seems to be getting a decent use out of it. I noticed this finger on the bottom here starting to extend south. That worried me a little bit. But you'll see in a moment they catch it. It's kind of scary how far it gets. Like I believe it gets well past this tree here. It's a pinon tree there, I think. I'm pretty sure, yeah, you see the wind flare up and it starts to burn, all that dry grass. Then you see the... um. Um, can you, can you pass that? The, um, they got behind the U-Haul truck and they stopped it from spreading there. And it looks like, yeah, okay, somebody did notice the finger heading, uh, I guess that would be south. You can see that officer walking away from it, so they do know about it. This is literally across the street from my house. Which is kind of scary a little bit. You don't want to see fire that close to your home. <laughs> now they're starting to catch the finger. See how far it made it? It's really surprising how far and fast it goes. If it was windier, 
That could have been bad. But they were fast. Apparently, um, Torrance, Santa Fe, and Moriarty Fire Departments all responded. And they really took care of it pretty quick. I think this is all from the first police car arriving to, you know, me going back inside because there's nothing interesting anymore. It was less than 30 minutes. It's amazing how much more details you can see when you're playing it back versus, you know, when you're um, watching it. I wonder if the fence was a natural firebreak of some sort or if it was just the lack of grass around the fence. Because you notice there's a fence line there and the fire followed a hard line along that fence. If anybody knows the um, the physics going on there, let me know. You can see how dry it is. If wherever the water hits, it brings up clouds of dirt. Oh, there's a dog and a person down there by the truck. Two dogs. Two dogs by the truck. Yeah, it looks like two pups. Boy, is that some scary crap. Look how far it spread so fast. I'd say that's about one acre of burned land. That house is probably sitting on about an acre. But it could have taken out this entire cluster of houses. Jeez. Yeah, there's the burned out car. That, that's junk now. <laughs> there's no coming back from that. Wow. Oh, check it out. Now, that's something I did not notice before. So, th at the bottom of the screen here, that yellow truck is dumping water into a temporary tub, like a pool. And I'm guessing the red truck is pumping out of that pool. So, the red truck can stay put with that pool right next to it, and other trucks can bring water to it and dump it in that pool. Now, that's pretty freaking cool. I've never seen that before. Oh, man, that's really cool. I was actually thinking about setting up like a, a soaker line along the, the peak of my roof, the whole length, and then hooking that up to a pump and a tank so that in a fire situation, you know, maybe an hour's worth of water, um, I could turn that on and it would just keep the house wet, like, if it, like as if it's raining. With the idea being if the house is wet, it can't catch fire as easily. Although a fire break would probably be easier. <laughs> Just put asphalt millings around the entire house, you know, at least five foot thick. You know, width, not depth. And that would, you know, probably be a pretty effective fire break. Most of this is grass fire, not debris fire. So if you have a break, well, then it can't spread. You can see where it stops on the edge of the road. It stops on the edge of the fence. The only place where the fire really propagates is where... You know, it can jump from grass to grass to grass. You can look in the middle there. Even that little dirt path right there was enough to stop it. It had to go down and around. That's interesting. If anybody knows of any good resources for learning about this kind of stuff and how I can protect my house. Now, I noticed they're yanking away the paneling under the house. I'm assuming... They're doing that to make sure there's no actual fire under the house that they can't see. Like if the house structure itself began to catch on fire, because you can see the fire went right up to the house. That makes sense, because you know you get a smoldering fire there and not even know it. That'd be scary. <laughs> Oof. So that's the only real danger living out here is you have fire and you have um hail. 
a little small hail, but still just hail and fire. Otherwise, it's pretty stable here. Not too much bad weather. That's my neighbor. The red roof there. I'm right across the street from my house. I stayed up and out of the way. I didn't want to get in nobody's way. So I kept it about 150 feet up and just stayed, didn't go over, directly over anything. I didn't want them to have to stop and pay attention to a little airplane flying around.